Wow, I like my new truck. <laughs> that was all four tires squealing. Holy cow. Granted, the road's wet, but... Woo! Well, here's an example of uh, neglecting your field. I'm out in one of mine I took over this year. These are my tile outlets. I dug down. That's the top of one. The other one's buried down there. That ain't gonna drain. So, let's do some digging. Well, that's much better. I can actually see my outlets now. We gotta dig a little more. It's just so silted in. Years and years of neglection. Neglection, so. Whew, had to take sweatshirt off. We were doing a little hand shoveling. Plus, I reached up into the tile and it's plump full of silt as well because it was plugged, so there's no way a good rain could flush out the tile. So yeah. We got that taken care of too. Okay, well it started to rain, but this outlet had a lot of troubles. Uh, at the end of each run of tile is usually a metal or a plastic uh, tube that helps protect the weaker plastic tile. So your, your last eight feet is a metal culvert essentially, and that's what sticks out of the dirt or sticks into the ditch wherever you're dumping your water. My metal outlet was junk. Got that out of the way and then looked up the tile. <clears throat> Since it's in grass, the roots grew into the tile. And whoever installed the tile, it went like this. No way it's going to work. So I dug back about 20 feet and got it to where upstream of where I cut the tile looks pretty good. So whoever took off didn't have it set right and they did a little up and down before they got into the main line more and uh, looks like it's smooth sailing from there. So I got it open trench for now. I'm right on the edge of the field. Uh, we'll come back in and dig this trench out better with a laser so that the water will drain to where it's supposed to go. So a lot of work, a lot of hand digging. Okay, it's been a day. There is one of the last outlets. I got a couple more in a ditch on the other side of the field. Another problem I'm noticing out here is a lot of these outlets uh, outlet into the CRP or into the grass and uh, whoever installed it didn't put non-perfed tile. So plastic tile that doesn't have the little slits in it. Believe it or not, for those that don't know about tiling, those grass roots will grow down into the tile through those slits searching for water. Their roots get in there thick enough and they plug the tile. So, common practice is to do non-perforated tile until you're into the field, which is over there. Then you switch to perforated tile uh, where you're not going to have grass or any kind of, uh, what is it called, perennial? Whenever the plants grow back each year. Once you're in the field, you do non-perf. We'll leave it at that. So, I've seen a lot of outlets that have uh, perforated tile right up to the end. They're jammed full of roots, so cleaning the actual outlet isn't going to do me a whole lot of good because upstream is plugged as well. But this one looks okay. They did put in about six to eight feet of non perf tile and then switched to perforated. The edge of the field is like 40 feet away, so didn't do enough non perf, but it helped. It keeps the roots out for at least some of it. But it's getting dark, and I think, uh, I think I put enough hours on this backhoe for the day, so I am going to head back to the trailer and head home. Wow, I like my new truck. <laughs> 
That was all four tire squealing. Holy cow. Granted, the road's wet, but... Woo! Been waiting eight, eight-ish months for this thing. I ordered it, sold the green one, and we got ourselves a brand new 2022 Ram TRX. So, pretty pumped. It's pretty sweet. Awesome interior. Awesome engine. I've drove it 25 miles going to the farm. Rain delay, so I thought I better go pick it up. So now the key to this thing is how not to get myself in trouble. Because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble with 705 horsepower and uh, supercharger. It's quite honestly stupid, but I love it. <laughs> Well, at least there's uh, no dust on the road. Won't get my new pickup dirty. It's gonna be hard to drive this as a daily driver. I'm not gonna lie. This is something that you just kind of take out on Sundays. Oh, it's too bad it's raining. It was beautiful. It's, well, it still is, but. It was shining so nice in that showroom. Yeah, I'm excited. So really the only things that I added on other than factory options, is the tonneau cover and folding running boards. Otherwise, it's all factory so far. Well, window tent too, added that. Everywhere. Where'd we go, Colorado? <laughs> yeah. Steamboat? Sounds fair enough. She's pretty sweet. No. So the road was kind of wet, so it was hard to hold 700 horsepower. I had all four tires squealing. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so it's a rain day, so we need to fix all the broken stuff, grease everything. But let's talk about this thing a little bit, because I am super excited about this. Um, it is performance truck. It's got a 6.2 liter supercharged engine, and it's going to need its maintenance, I guess needs to be changed since it is brand new at 1500 miles oil needs to be changed but after that every three to four thousand miles it needs to have its oil changed um, what are some of the other cool features about this truck the power fold running boards is an add-on I wanted those I just those are so cool um, TRX comes with the beautiful screen air-conditioned um, heated seats, heated steering wheel. It's got launch mode. That is not able to be used until it hits a thousand miles. Like the, once it hits a thousand miles, launch mode's um, unlocked, I guess. Gotta break the engine in before you rot on it too hard, even though I have rotted on it pretty hard already, naturally. Uh, looks like it's got AC and heated rear seats also. Tons of room in the back seat gonna hurt me to put Toby in this truck I'll tell you that get his little hair all over but you know he likes coming to the farm uh, massive sunroof I love that that is so cool um, what else I should probably put some mud flaps on it to minimize rock chipping I did not do that yet but I probably will step right here to get into the pickup Aluminum tailgate, so it is super light. I've got these tie-down rails in the box. Otherwise, it's just a sweet truck. Do some research on them, they're awesome. It's, it's got this here, you know, you gotta drive around looking impressive. It's got surround cameras on it, so you can 360 view of the vehicle. Pretty standard, all the, the newer, fancier vehicles have. This is a pretty loaded, model or package so pretty sweet i got it from valley ford in morris minnesota just a local dealer there um for our area a bigger dealer but they've got some pretty sweet trucks on the lot i ordered this one because i wanted it to be the way i ordered it and so but they do have some cool stuff so if you guys want to check out a pretty cool dealership they got some really nice vehicles and uh I'll drop the link in the description, but 
yeah, I like it. I dig it. It's going to be fun. When I have more time, maybe like after fall and it's over uh, 1,000 miles, we'll maybe make a video of her doing some launches. All right. Eric's been greasing that up, tightening the belt, conveyor belt. I need to grease my machine. I've got my clutches bolted because I put brand new clutches on there and smoked one of the two because I found out why I'm having had so much trouble. There was this much mud built up all uneven on the tank cross augers from Black Beans. Well, they're not designed to be pulling that type of load. So I bolted them, never had no issues, obviously, because they're bolted. Now, before corn, I want to test them in soybeans, make sure I haven't damaged any badly. When it started slipping, I stopped immediately, so it should be just fine. But I got to pull them off, take the bolts out, put it back together, and hopefully it'll be just fine because I missed that kit so, so bad. The only good thing about this is it comes apart really easy since I've done it so many times. And it's pretty straightforward and easy. So here are the two little bolts. They're just uh, quarter inch bolts. That's what locks it from turning. Take them out, which my socket is a 13, not a 7 16. Whoa. And now it should free spin. Perfect. So sometimes it's good to have a rain day to get, you know, everything maintained, greased, fueled, oils checked, chains checked, lube the chains, all the little projects that you just don't have time for when everybody's just going. But remember how plugged up this was in black beans? It's all clean now, no dirt. So soybeans, they are actually very abrasive. So they cleaned the combines up really nice, got all that dirt out. The first few loads, Randy's at home dumping them, and he's like, why is there so much dirt chunks and stuff coming out? And yeah, that was just it cleaning, soybeans cleaning the dirt off all the cross augers and shoe augers and unload auger. So this, though, I think needs to be tightened. It's a bit floppy. So we'll tighten that up, probably should check this one also. Didn't see that, Doug. That's big Swede tight right there. Better tight than loose though, until it's stripped. Well, this is bad news. We're out of adjustment and it's not tight. We need to find the half link and remove a half link. Good thing it rained. Brody and Eric just got back. They were uh, unhooking the top air sprayer over at the head shed for winter. We got it winterized and greased, washed, ready for next season. Eric, I need the big Swede muscle. Help! 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 Cleaning out the empty bottles. So this is what I was looking for. I took the belt off because rotating the rotor by hand was a disaster. It doesn't work. Took the belt off so we could rotate it. Took this off so as chains wear they get longer because the pins wear out. And they put these in so you can take the, this is called a half link, remove it, make the chain shorter. The beans are hard. What do you mean the beans are hard? Yeah, they were 9% last night. Well, they got away from us. Good thing it rained. Yeah, we're rehydrating right now. There's lots of good things about this rain, other than we're not getting anything harvested. Alrighty. That's done. So much dirt. <laughs> the worst zerk in the world. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> It's a two-man operation on this outfit because the green tank's so massive. You love your in? big tank until you got to go down there. Ooh. 
Ow. More. Good grief, buddy. Okay. Oh. Ready? Yeah. Yep. All that effort for that. Oh, I wonder if I need to... I'm going for it. <laughs> I need about another foot. Brody. Okay, go. Yep. Oh my gosh. You know, we're relatively small farmers. Like, body size small. And we barely fit in here. How would a, you know, a mature farmer fit? Like the big Swede. Do you fit down here? Oh, he closed the door on us. I'm going for dinner. Well, I guess we're going over the cab. There's one way to get down. So, Brody, was it you that found this? Uh, it what? It was Brody that found this. Here, let's see if we can find it and show you guys the disastrous, almost catastrophe. The belt is missing. Moment later. Lots of chunks. There's cracks up there. I don't understand how we missed this in inspection, but we did, and I'm just glad it did not fly apart because if that belt blows up, you said it takes the wiring harness with it? It can. <laughs> you got all this right here. It can destroy the wiring harness. Worse than that, I imagine it will plug the discharge beater beyond belief with. That runs the beater that takes all the trash away from the rotor. So if that, or the beater quits turning, the rotor's just gonna jam all the product back until everything comes to a halting stop with a lot of bad deal. Luckily that didn't happen here. So we just gotta replace the belt, which ain't a fun one. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't allow much clearance for anything here. There it is. Okay, one last pulley and she's out. Oh my goodness. How lucky are we here? I'd say we massively avoided a whole lot of misery. <laughs> Out of all the belts that can break on a combine, I would honestly go Not to that. say that this would be the worst one to break. Yep. That's for sure from that one. <laughs> all right. Well, we learned how to do it quicker, taking more shielding off. So that actually wasn't too bad. Grandpa's going to get, he's actually in town right now picking one up. So thank God that's on hand and ain't back ordered from COVID. Or that really would have been good. some bad. more belts while we're here? Grandpa got the new belt. Look at the amount of threads on this tightener. And you literally have to come out to like right there, like a foot, maybe more of a foot and a half of threads. You can use this, but my pipe runs out of length about right there. I would have built a new one quick. If I had the parts, I probably would have. It is a dang good thing it rained. <laughs> I would say so. We spent most of the day working on these doggone things. Air filters are blown out. Um, windows are washed, greased. We just need to fuel them up. Oil's added to. Oh, we just haven't done fuel? Um. So you guys remember when the tank auger got crushed in this combine last fall? We've got a new one. 
Um, I believe this one is maybe updated. I don't know. But we're gonna put, gonna put this one in because the other one we've got angle irons welded on it to support it, which is fine. But it's bent down, so it's not filling, unloading as quickly as it should. Brody, well, Brody, don't put up with that. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know what I need for tools. Probably 13, huh? 13, 15, I'm sure. Oh, this looks fine. You need me to help you uh, get, get that yes. it up? Yes, yes, I'll hand it up. That was too much work there. <laughs> 13? Looks like a 13. Here. It's all threaded. The new one's threaded, so it should be, should be good. Oh boy. We might need some electrical tape. Yeah. So cool. What was that rubbing on? The big weld here? Oh yeah, I see. It's like this. Maybe pinched. <laughs> good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh -huh. You're so strong. Well, it's the quarter inch angle. It's not even an angle iron. Flat steel they used here. Look you at this. this. No, I was combining when they brought this one home dead. <laughs> Big enough steel, I guess. It held. Huh. Hmm. Well done one side, huh? That's what uh, desperate, desperate times. This is what you get. Okay, we got it in here. It looks like the same thing as me. I was told it was a, a pip, so that means upgrade, redesign. Looks like the same thing, so probably we'll get crushed again. We'll be putting the old junk back in. But we will try, I guess. We're going to tape our wire here that's all rubbed on. And put the, co the safety, for safety covers on for the wires. And this job will be done. Throw it. Got it. Done. Does it hopefully, uh, Does it support your weight? Hopefully, it don't kink. Hopefully. For some reason, I don't have much hope for it. Oh, come on now. <laughs> you, would, if you wouldn't fill it so full. So 26,000 is too much? <laughs> <laughs> you can put 26,000 pounds like in this machine. 33 bushels. <laughs> all right, guys, we got her all uh, fueled up and ready to go. We got the chopper up. So, John Deere's suggestion for this being clog clogging up the sensors for your shoe was to tape or bolt, and I cocked and taped. Now I just put my finger in it. Nice. But that is their suggestion. To put bolts in, I just taped everything just because. We'll see how long it lasts. We don't have very many acres of beans left to do. Corn, it's never an issue, so yeah. But I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.